record. All right, so the first thing we're going to set is an image shape variable. And this will be similar to our last one, except this is going to be a dimension of three. So first, it's going to be an image size, next, another image size, and three. And the reason for this is because it's RGB. So it's going to be 224 by 224 with three color channels. So RGB. Now, this is what our input shape will be for our neural network. So now let's grab the neural network that we want. So we want to use the mobile net v2 model and this one has been pre-trained and it has optimal weights so this is how you get very high accuracy on your new data sets rather than creating a neural network from scratch i recommend doing transfer learning because you would get much better results because the neural network has been trained on those patterns and it understands and has a very convoluted idea of those pa patterns. And if you understand convolutional neural networks, then you would understand that the pattern, uh, the way it understands patterns is a lot more um, analytical or um, a lot more specific to what we're trying to get it to predict. So we'll do tf.krs.applications dot and as you'll see here these are all the neural networks that you can use vgg16 is a very popular one it's a very powerful one resnet 50 is really good um, but for now we'll use mobile net v2 and here we'll set the input shape equal to image shape which is the variable we just set here next we'll do include top and we'll set that to false and the reason we do that is because we want to freeze all of the weights in that neural network rather than retrain those weights we don't want to we don't want to change those weights all we want to do is add on to the neural network add on to the mobile net v2 neural network and we'll make it so um, it classifies five classes rather than 80 classes so yeah and then we'll train it to understand our flower data set so we'll get there when we get there but for now let's just set this weights parameter equal to image net okay so let's run this code and you should see it download our neural network and there you go so that's successful now we want to freeze the neural network so we'll do base model which is our base model and we'll set that equal to trainable equals false and this is going to freeze all the neurons in a sense um, for our base model now we want to add that on to our new model which we're going to, going to create so we'll set a variable model equal to tf.keras.sequential and this is going to create a sequence or a sequential neural network okay and in here the first layer in our neural network will be our base model so this is going to act as the first layer and if you know neural networks neural networks act in a sequence of layers so we add layers as we want it so the next layer following our base model will be a tf.keras.layers dot conf 2d which is a convolutional neural neural a convolutional layer and if you know a convolutional layer it's it's pretty much just understanding the patterns inside of an image and the more convolutional neural networks not more than often the more convolutional layers you have the more the neural network will understand about the data set but it, it you have to un, you have to uh, apply that idea when it's when you need it to. It doesn't always work like that, but most of the time it does. So here we'll do activation equals relu, and the activation is pretty much just uh, it's a function placed on the weights, and yeah, it's it's really just yeah. 
it's it's a function placed on the weights pretty much <laughs> next we'll add a new layer and this one's going to be a tf keras dot layers and we'll add a dropout layer and following that we'll add another layer tf dot keras dot layers dot global average pooling 2d and following that we'll have tf dot keras dot layers dot dense five since we only have five classes we want our layer to predict five classes and this is the last layer so normally on the last layer if you're doing classification you want it to be a dense layer and this is going to be the amount of classes and then the activation that we want will be softmax which will return a number in probability and that probability will be associated with the class okay so this these two layers here the dropout and global average pooling i'm not going to explain in this course just because that's a bit more theoretical but if you guys wanted to do research on it just search up dropout layer and you can do some research on it okay um and do the same for global average pooling but it's not necessary as long as you just understand that our neural network is a sequence of functions and that the last layer is a dense um, layer and you're classifying it in five classes or in the next app we'll classify up to 131 classes um, so we'll set this to 131 at the activation is going to be softmax but we'll deal with that when we cross it but for now let's run this code block and it should work and it did so let's create a new file a new code block so i can just press this and let's compile this model so we'll do model dot compile and the optimizer will be tf dot keras dot optimizers dot atom which is the popular optimizer for neural networks um, like I said, this is not a theoretical course on neural networks. So if you want to understand what an atom optimizer is, uh, do your research on it. But yeah, now the loss will be our categorical, categor categorical cross entropy. So pretty much this is just a mathematical formula that calculates the loss after each training iteration and it tweaks the parameters. I mean... If you want to know more about it, feel free to do research. But like I said, it's not a theoretical course. And we'll set the metrics to accuracy. So we're, the metrics we're going to be analyzing is the accuracy. Now you can set this to different metrics, um, but for now we'll do accuracy. So we'll run this code block and it should work and it does. So now let's fit our model. And we're going to set the P epochs to 10. And if you want a better neural network, normally increasing the epochs is the solution, but you need to be careful of overfitting. And overfitting is another theoretical concept, um, but pretty much is the neural network is only um, making classification based off the data set it's been trained on. So it only understands the data set. And that's not what we want. We want a neural network that can generalize its, its understanding of images. So you need to avoid overfitting pretty much. Now we're going to set, we're going to fit the model and we're going to fit it equal to a, a variable called history. So we'll do model dot fit. And this is going to take our train generator. So it's going to take the data set that we made for a train generator. Next, it's going to take the epochs that we created. So we created that variable right above. And finally, it's going to take the validation generator that we made. So validation data equals vol generator. And we'll run this. And as you'll see, we're training the neural network. Beautiful. And there you go. And you can see the accuracy is going up extremely fast and the reason for that is because we're doing transfer learning so we're taking a pre-trained neural network that already has an understanding of different patterns and we're just tuning it into our own data set and there you go our accuracy is going really high really quick and this is just off the first epoch so i'll see you guys once this is done but for now we've done a lot we've built the neural network and 
now we're training it. So I'll see you guys once this is done. All right, awesome. So my neural network just finished training. And as you can see, we're getting a 99% accuracy. And we've been getting this 99% accuracy ever since the seventh or sixth iteration. And if, um, if you realized or noticed that after um, the 46th iteration, it's very slow. And the reason it's very slow is because it's performing a validation accuracy test on your data set. So uh, that explains like, you know, whenever it lags or stops a little once it hits the last last step. And it's just because it's running over a validation set. Now, now that we have our neural network fully trained and we're getting a 99% accuracy and a 86% validation accuracy, um, we can export our neural network. So in order to do that, we'll create a variable called saved model dir, and we'll set it equal to this, which will be the current directory. Now we're going to do a tf.saved model dot save and we're going to save this model so we're going to do saved model dir to save it in the current directory and after that we're going to set a converter variable and this is going to be equal to tf dot light tf light converter dot from saved model we're going to pass pass in our saved model dir okay and this is going to convert our model. And another command we need to use to fully convert it is tf light model. And we'll set this equal to converter. And we'll do convert as a method. And this is going to convert our neural network here that we created with TensorFlow and Keras into a tf light model and tf light is used for on device machine learning as i mentioned uh, multiple times in this course now we'll write this into a file so we'll do with open and we're going to open a file called model.tf light and if it doesn't exist like I said, we'll create it and we'll write this one as binary. So we have to add this B after the W to make it binary. And we'll do it as F. And finally, we'll do F write TF light model. And we'll run this code block and it should write our file into this directory. So once it's done, I'm going to refresh it. And once we're done that, we're going to download our labels.txt file and our model.tf light file. And we'll export that into our Flutter project. And from there, we'll be able to do some classification. So let's just wait for this to finish converting. And once it's done, um, you'll see the file here. So pretty exciting. Um, model.tf light beautiful beautiful so you guys learn how to build a neural network and you guys learn how to convert that neural network into a tf light model using this code so now let's download our two it our two files so to do that there's some google collab specific functions and the one we want is in the files dependency and from here we can do files.download and we can download the files that we want so we want tf light and the next file that we want is the labels file so we'll do labels.txt and we'll download that and it's going to download it into our local system and beautiful as you can see it's done exactly that so let's go here let's go back to our flutter project and here we'll import our two new files but we'll do that in the next lecture where we'll in, we'll extract our files put it into our assets folder and then test our neural network so i'll see you guys in the next video where we'll do exactly that and if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please let me know 
I would be more than happy to help and I'll see you guys in the next video where we finally test this app.